Issue two that we're going to look at tonight is when Paul uses the word um, law in our English translations, the Greek word that we looked at is namos, is he even talking about the written Torah of Moshe here? Right? So that's what we're going to look at tonight. Is he even talking about the written Torah? Here is my conclusion to this verse, verse three of chapter five, where Paul warns them. Yes, it is a warning, but what's the nature of the warning? Here's what I have to say in succinct terms. After having gone through all of that issue one and issue two and two and three weeks of lengthy commentary, here's what it all boils down to, folks. Here's what I have to say. Instead of Paul warning his Gentile readers away from total allegiance to the written Torah of God if they undergo proselyte conversion to Judaism, perhaps it is better, I say, to understand the verse as a warning against total allegiance primarily to the oral Torah and or the sectarian halacha of the influencers. That's the warning. The warning against this sectarian halacha of the influencers and or the oral Torah. And what would that um, halacha entail? I go on to say in my final uh, sentence here, this particular halacha, this particular uh, group policy, in case you're unfamiliar with that term halacha, this kind of humanizing of the word of God, the way in which we are to walk, if I were to literally translate the word halacha from the Hebrew, the way in which we are to walk is that this particular policy in, in that day does not include Gentiles in their membership roster, which is a halacha that Paul would definitely have problems with. And that's why I think that it is a warning. So if we go back and look, once again, at Galatians 5.3, and I'll close with this. Galatians 5.3 is couched within the, um, within the context of a warning where Paul says, don't submit to a yoke of slavery. Of course, this is a kind of a spiritual slavery for those who would choose to reject Yeshua. And then uh, commit, uh, concomitant with that um, choice, to reject Yeshua and instead embrace an ethnic-driven righteousness, Paul uses this word circumcision a few different times. Notice it in verse 2. Look, I, Paul, say that you have to accept circumcision. And then in verse 3, I testify again to every man who accepts circumcision. And then in uh, verse 6, for in Christ Jesus neither circumcision. So the context of circumcision in these passages, in, this, in just these first, say, six verses here that I've highlighted, the ones that we read in our liturgy, I think it's evident that what Paul is referring to is not just mere physical circumcision, but rather he is referring to what we've come now to understand in our study of, of Galatians, is this idea of proselyte conversion for those who were not born with legally recognized Jewish identity in the first century. This will, of course, include Gentiles. So Gentiles wishing to be counted as righteous would normally have to contend with the, their ethnicity as a Gentile. And very briefly, basically, they would have to undergo a conversion to whatever, um, whatever uh, what do we say, a denomination of Judaism that they're joining themselves to. And depending on whatever denomination they join themselves to as a proselyte, they would have to take upon themselves not only an obligation to the written Torah, which is okay, right? Obligation to written Torah is always a good thing. We just read that in the book of Deuteronomy. But more importantly, and most more more uh, 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 dangerous uh, in Paul's view, is a commitment to the oral tradition and the 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 the, the popular halacha that sought to distance itself from Gentiles within a Israel that define themselves as Jewish only. So the point I'm trying to make is that Paul is really warning them to that if they become proselytes, if they join the Jewish community that they're seeking to be counted as righteous in, that these Gentiles are going to take on Jewish identity, and, and that's neither here nor there per se, but they're going to take on Jewish identity, and they're going to obligate themselves to written Torah, which from Paul's perspective is okay, but they're also going to obligate themselves to oral Torah and to tradition and to halakha that basically says that there's no room for Gentiles in the people group of God. And that last part, that last ingredient of there's no room for Gentiles within the people group of God, there's no righteous Gentile that inherits a, a place in the world to come, the Torah is not for Gentiles or anything like that, that is the part that Paul's going to say, nope, 
I'm going to bring my gavel down and make a decision against that. I'm going to draw a line in the sand and say, no, no, no. This, my Gentile believers, my, my Gentile followers, this is where you also are going to have to draw the line in seeking to be counted as righteous among these Jewish communities. Because uh, the Torah is for Jews and Gentiles. God's righteousness is for Jews and Gentiles. God's salvation is for Jews and Gentiles. God's Messiah is for Jews and Gentiles. God's Spirit is for Jews and Gentiles. In a word, all of Israel is comprised of Jews and Gentiles. And therefore, Jew- Israel is not a Jewish-only set. And uh, any halakha that says otherwise is a, is, is a halakha that's headed in the wrong direction. And I, Paul, am going to warn you away from any such halakha. So, you guys understand now? He's not warning them away from written Torah. He's warning them away from any oral Torah or any tradition that tries to separate itself from Jewish-only Israel.